good morning to one and all i hope that everyone is in good health and that this good health be your forever companion i am shriva shwasista president of the csi student chapter and the student council of kmit and it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you all mr bala prasad petigari chief products officer high tech cto engineering team at tata consultancy services a true professional with more than 20 years of industry experience who is instrumental in digital solution strategy and influence over 200 million us dollars of business he is a specialist in enterprise architecture api management cloud business solutions dotnet framework 4.0 and many more he is also a secretary at the ieee hyderabad section and the vice chairman at csi hyderabad chapter an ea member of the open group board and a microsoft azure certified architect, uh, architect and the holder of many prestigious certifications sir surely has a diverse range of knowledge and skill to influence and train young minds such as ours please welcome our speaker for today shri bala prasad petigari kmit welcomes you sir thank you and uh, can you also give me the presenter privileges on the other one where i have joined using my desktop to share the presentation bala petigari looks like it's disabled right now was it serious the one which does not have a photograph great so now that still not received I've renamed my profile name as a Bala Presenter. Just look into that. Who is the host?
please confirm if you are able to hear me. At least put in the chat window for my evidence. Okay, thank you. I think uh, you are able to hear me now clearly. Let, let us get started. Thank you, my sister, for a warm introduction and helping everyone uh, about the importance of this CSI. So it's my privilege and honor to be part of this particular session to enlighten you on the overall uh, importance of the Computer Society of India and how well it is uh, relevant and important in every IT professional to be part of a standard body or an organization which is really having a strong intent to serve the nation. And also a society which has been formed by the professionals to drive the impact of IT, impact of technology in helping and serving the nation's superior needs as we move on. Today we are all going through some of the important pandemic stage at this point of time also. Uh, there is an element of thought which is triggered within the IT to drive many such kind of a solutions which, which could save human lives, where technology can deliver and create a bigger impact in the entire society. You have seen <clears throat> with the promotion of the high team, Aragyu Setu mobile application was able to create, get got created, and it was able to provide the guidance, provide the vaccination center appointments, provide the kind of a uh, guidelines on how to behave, how to uh, drive yourself in the situation of the pandemic. So similarly, there are many challenges we all face. When we face all the challenges, sometimes society behavior is influenced by the IT. Similarly, IT gets influenced by the society uh, needs. And uh, when such kind of a scenario emerges, it's all very important that, that how you try to bridge this particular gap and bring in the kind of an awareness and constructs which can drive dramatic in, uh, improvements in the overall uh, consumptions of the computer society. So Computer Society of India has been formed with a set of society of professionals way back in March 6th, 1965. We normally try to uh, use March 6th as a uh, CSI day where we try to celebrate uh, the formation of the CSI. And uh, we have this register office at Hyderabad and while the head office gets operated from the Mumbai. And primarily uh, the CSI uh, body uh, is driven and run by the elected professionals who are all just like uh, the part of the industry and academia bodies, where they all come together with a common objective to make an impact to the society. Today, when I'm trying to speak about Computer Society of India, it's a great pride for me to share that information that today we have around eight regions under which CSA operates. And these eight regions has got several chapters, like almost like a 78 chapters we have across, where 491 student branches have been formed within that to drive CSI initiatives. Covering and creating a bigger impact, more than 100,000 members within the India. That itself indicates the kind of a reach the kind of impact it has got as we try to move on. You need to also understand that every body, when it gets formed, will carry a specific mission under which it needs to operate and run. And Computer Society of India also started with a vision, started with a kind of a overall need and objective that it needs to facilitate research, knowledge, sharing, and learning and career enhancements. It's very, very important that we all understand the importance of the uh, research in the context of today. Uh, today, you try to see many innovations are getting triggered because of the research. Today, you see many such uh, uh, inspiring and uh, uh, enhancements are happening because of the uh, research, what is triggered, not only in the IT, but the combination of the IT and medical, combination of IT and retail, combination of IT and many other industry verticals. You take banking, manufacturing, uh, healthcare, insurance, travel, hospitality, utilities. Anywhere you try to take, it has got an element of research to look forward uh, for the future. The future is very, very inspiring and it requires 
uh, the new entrants or the, who are coming into the industry, the career, uh, who are trying to make the industry vibrant, uh, need to integrate and weave into the entire IT community. The entire impo importance of the mission is all about how, we, how well we can inspire and nurture the new entrants into the industry. So that as the students, you are getting uh, educated and graduating from the different engineering colleges, uh, it's important that you also have an understanding how the IT behaviors are there and what is the expectations of the IT and how well you can groom yourself in that direction. So CSI can help you in the direction by mentoring, uh, also through some kind of a research projects, internships, which can really help you to manage the functions. The third important area of the mission is how well I can empower users in industry and government, where whether they have the IT background or they don't have it. But continuously engaging with them and imparting the IT knowledge and making it more relevant and making them understand the importance of that in the form of academia, research, and industry collaboration. So this community initiative is what we drive within the CSA, really promote that kind of a gap promote the collaboration and try to bridge the gap as we move forward. The most important thing is uh, today, when we are trying to look out for any kind of an activity, whether you are trying to study in the engineering college or whether you are trying to choose any particular street in the engineering, or if you are trying to choose any internship, you have not a purpose, uh, there is nothing. Uh, tru truly, if I speak, any, anything we is driven with a purpose has got a huge amount of uh, uh, attention and traction and the purpose of CSI is also something of that nature because the purpose and intent is to build the knowledge repository and build the understanding of scientific and educational and all the advanced areas associated to the different theory and design and practice of IT so that we will be able to inculcate and formulate the standards associated to the computer science discipline across the uh, professionals and also within the students. Most, most importantly, you need to have a common platform uh, which can drive this particular disciplines and subdisciplines to be sharing the knowledge across uh, from the specialists to the public and also from the subject matter experts to the public. So the reason is uh, so that we will be able to foster a specific sense of partnership where the professionals can come and engage in the different fields together. Today, when I'm trying to speak, um, uh, I've been very active in this Computer Society of India from almost like uh, six years. Uh, and uh, even though I have this membership for more than 20 years, from six years, I've been part of the CSI body in the form of a managing committee member, uh, serving as a volunteer, serving as a, currently serving as a vice chair. And where we were trying to work with some of the specific government departments uh, like uh, electricity department. We have been working with the human resources department. We have worked with uh, the national security department to see how computer society can do the specific assessments and provide the recommendations which can really transform their entire IT uh, usage in the context of serving the human, serving the civilians. Eh? And this is where we are uh, trying to partner and drive that kind of a sense of collaboration to uh, exchange the knowledge. We were able to work with the different departments together to promote the applications and the different technologies, which is really um, enabling to improve the quality of the life and uh, try to benefit the overall India. So it can improve the uh, citizens' uh, services, it can improve the government uh, reach to the citizens in a right and a better way. And there is also a need uh, that we should have a constant collaboration with the education systems where we can enable them the high quality education and also provide them the possible learning opportunities which can have the cross-discipline knowledge sharing and uh, drive that understanding. That's where we try to bring in some of the distinguished lecture talks where some of the SMEs across the globe will have a <clears throat> will be requested to come and speak to our students and also the, the professionals so that that outside in views can be shared within uh, within the community and last but not the least also try to provide the high quality technical education research and professional activities in fact we were also trying to drive last year during the pandemic stage also we have done the mentorship and internship programs where we not only coach the students on some of the mobile development, Java and open source, artificial intelligence, blockchain, like 
companies we have chosen and try to educate them for over a period of six weeks and also handholded them in doing some kind of mini project, which gave them the practical understanding of solving the problems. That will also make them have a good hands-on experience associated to the different uh, uh, tools uh, and technologies, which will really make them ready for the uh, taking the opportunity and leap into the uh, space of IT when they get graduated. So how we achieve all these things? So basically, if you want to run a society, it is important that you should have a specific governance structure, uh, the structure which will really help us to reach and create a bigger impact. Now, that's how the society which has been uh, driven uh, has been organized into the regions. As I said, eight regions, 78 chapters, 491 branches, and specific divisions, and also the special interest groups who will be having a capable capability of the technology depth in holding the workshops and depth of the technology lectures and try a lot of educational and instructional programs. Over and double, we encourage um, students and professionals to come together in the form of uh, and doing a problem solving uh, debates, quiz competitions, some of the um, uh, kind of a virtual round table conferences or the workshops, which will really enable them to bring their understanding um, inside out and outside and use together. And truly, we also promote people to write. So most importantly, Expression of knowledge is very important for you to uh, express your understanding about a technology and also try to state how a technology can solve a problem, how some of the real world problems can be addressed through the IT convergence. All these things can be really brought in and also used to CSI magazine and journals for the publications. So there are several periods. CSI communications is one of the magazine which gets published every month and uh, on the specific themes that apart from that there is also periodicals and articles people get published using the SID specific chapters as well and for that uh, there is a specific way we try to recognize and we also try to uh, appreciate the kind of contributions uh, where individuals are really making as part of the knowledge sharing now most importantly you see when you try to look into the computer society of india you also see that um, some of the key building blocks are necessary so just like you when you try to build a house you have a specific pillars beams and the entire structure forms right similarly a society is also something like building a house where you're really trying to put down your key building blocks which is really enabling the computer society of india functions in the right way now when i'm trying to say about that do you understand uh, uh, most importantly about how CSA has been divided into the different chapters, divisions, and societies. So special interest groups, I'll be coming out spe specifically on that, how it is organized and how many special inter group, interest groups are there and how you can join that particular groups and try to uh, learn from the particular groups and also contribute to that. And there are several and various education programs and workshops. In fact, uh, I have personally driven some of the design thinking workshops, blockchain workshops, AI workshops. Uh, there is also related to the IoT workshops we have done. And specifically, some of the certification programs, also smaller certification programs like uh, uh, Java certification programs, we, we, where we have done not only the practical way of teaching them, but also trying to do through the case study so that they are more comfortable uh, in programming the things without with a fearless attitude. Most importantly, in the student community, I always propagate the thought that you should be a fearless programmers if you really wanted to be successful when you want to get into the IT field. The way you try to drive, develop that understanding across the technology and also develop the breadth, depth in the programming can really make a remarkable impact, a remarkable change in your entire uh, conduct and behavior when you try to face your interviews. And most uh, importantly, we also try to teach on the white paper publications and also the research papers, how you really try to do your primary research, secondary research, and what kind of a constructs would be really needed for doing the research so that it will drive you, drive you the full understanding. Not only that, it's also where we try to touch upon what are the sources of the funding for their research projects, how you can collaborate with the industry to obtain some of the research projects and also deliver it back to them. So, so the another building block where we try to do a lot of uh, focus and importance is to create the knowledge management portal and also through the newsletter channels and the, the publication channels, we try to promote whatever the happenings are there within the CSI gets propagated and not. 
further to that during the our annual general body meeting or section congress uh, events uh, where people come together at the can during the conventions section student convention uh, means student conventions csa student conventions where we bring uh, people together to get recognized for their volunteering activities in the ward then so that they get the immense recognition and visibility within the entire community that's some of the strong affiliation today we carry with the uh, ietrb uh, acs vcs and also part of uh, the contributor in the form of a member for the ifip and ciac and there is a specific set of uh, overall uh, member of understanding what we carry with cdac microsoft pmi google as well we have created mous and uh, there are some other uh, bodies which has come together in the recent past like a smart bridge also was we have signed up an mou to help them uh, to promote the education campaigns in some of the new emerging technologies so typically if you are asking who are all generally become the members of csi as i mentioned 100000 plus people are there who are part of the csi family generally we have members coming in from the it professionals uh, specifically on the cio cxo areas and uh, working in the different corporates and governments and the different academy institutes who are all coming together most importantly you also see the csi members are coming from the research background and uh, there are also entrepreneurs who are also willing to exchange their uh, views on the startup communities and entrepreneurship activities and try to collaborate with the other uh, co uh, other technology partners and seek advice how technology can help them in uh, helping them in promoting the product in the market also so there is also a specific set of members uh, the <clears throat> organization members like a, colleges could be the um, college itself could be like an organization members and companies that could be like a corporate uh, membership they can carry with the csi so total as of now as i trying to speak we are around 63000 active members and uh, who are trying to help in uh, building the csi community for future <clears throat> so as i speak uh, we also try to drive lot of research and development focus uh, benefits Uh, how do you do that uh, and basically uh, there are certain uh, engagements and research projects which has been out at the csa divisional level and uh, there is also some of the financial support is offered for the minor research projects with the help of corporate sponsorship and also with the government sponsorship and some portion of the sponsorship also can be obtained from the pool of csi and uh, there is also uh, ability for you to use the platform of computer society of india to publish some of your research and technical papers and uh, which can be part of the uh, the chcha journal and publications of excess to society uh, newsletters and also the sister societies like uh, itrg ifit cr and others so as i mentioned there is a very important initiative we normally conduct and drive is about the knowledge sharing and networking in fact uh, some of the common and uh, very often connected knowledge sharing area is all about in the technical talks what we try to do we normally do it during even in the pandemic phase last year we have conducted over uh, 21 technical talks and uh, we were able to uh, disseminate the kind of knowledge what is important in terms of uh, uh, technology impact it could create during uh, different uh, challenge ecosystems now it could be talking about talking about the future workplace how the future workplaces are emerging it could be really uh, understanding about the, how the real time collaboration tools can help in effectively working in the a remote working environment uh, try to understand some of the cutting edge technologies and emerging technologies like 4G 5G 6G uh, or if you are trying to really understand the AI and its impact uh, how how does it really impact in the organizations how it is really trying to help you understand the heart of possibility uh, you using the artificial intelligence this technical talks really open up that kind of things and especially for the CSI members uh, we normally offer a lot of discounted rates anywhere between the 10 to 50% for the people who wanted to participate in the csa conferences seminars symposiums workshops and technical talks generally technical talks or free lectures where you can take advantage of uh, that uh, 60 minutes relax session to understand what is going on in that particular area of knowledge and most of the other important specific uh, chapter activities are also also bring in different industry and academia and research scientists together uh, to drive the events like uh, knowledge forum security forum symposium cio meets annual cio meet this has not happened from the last 2 to 3 years so we wanted to 
to can reconceive it and try to take it up because of certain other limitations it could not happen but this this are this are these places where you get an opportunity to connect with the leaders and also understand how they are able to um, create more opportunities for the students and also understand where actually the investments of the uh, ITs are going and what is the technology focus what they are trying to put in so that you get a first hand information and uh, we also try to deliver a lot of guest lectures in the educational institutions. Basically, like KMRT can uh, utilize the network of CSI to invite uh, uh, the experts from the industry in the different domains of your interest. Say, for an instance, you wanted to understand how AI and explainable AI wanted to work. You can reach out to CSI and ask that I need an expert who can come and teach my students on explainable AI. Similarly, you may want to know that uh, I want someone who can come and speak on quantum computing. So we try to give you the right um, connects with, with, uh, and the semis who can come and speak in your premise or through the virtual, uh, virtual mode, whatever is possible. Now, so basically, you, I, I normally say that um, don't take any membership, but you try to understand the value behind the membership. So. It's not about uh, we wanted to say that everyone who wanted to be a member need to take the membership. First, realize a value. If you see a value, you automatically take the membership. So most importantly, you understand what is the benefits from the CA affiliation. So when you are a Computer Society of India uh, member, then the affiliations with the sister societies like in IEEE or PMI or Singapore Computer Society, uh, you talk about empowering women in IT, and institution of engineering, you normally get your discounted membership fees for the ITV and the CS. So basically what it says is, you take one membership, you get uh, discounts in the other membership. And the second aspect is, whenever you're trying to, you are a CSI member, when you want to participate in an event and conferences, again, you get at a very, very subsidized rates and discounted rates. And you also get access to a lot of standards and publications associated to the PMI. And there is also a CSI knowledge repository that also you get access to it. And you also have an opportunity to attend research workshops and symposiums, again, at a discounted rates when compared to the non-CSI members. And uh, some of the facilities, CSI has got a lot of facilities across India and outside India as well. And when you try to visit that particular business, and if you say that you are a CSA member, you get access to these facilities and you also have an opportunity to hold or have yourself an accommodation. In fact, um, all IITs within India has got uh, access to the CSA members to uh, take the advantage of the facilities when you're visiting that particular locations. So, so such kind of a benefits do exist for you to take advantage. And uh, you also, if you, are, if you are a student in the future, you want to become a project manager or product manager, one of the important certification is about a PMI, what you call Project Management Institute Certification, PMP. And uh, so you get the certification program offered through the CSI. And also you know, there is a lot of skill certification programs which are enabled through the CDAC. That also comes to you as a very, very discounted rates. And uh, there are, uh, MOEs which we have signed with Amazon, Google, um, IBM and uh, Red Hat, and IBM Red Hat and Microsoft that also gives, give you a lot of subsidized rates and accessing to their training programs and workshops. And there is a uh, specific experts available in the uh, safe agile practitioner, which is which we normally call as the scaled agile, lean six sigma. Uh, this is which are all process oriented in executing the projects and uh, improving your leadership and project management or product development background. So such kind of a programs are also available. Uh, you get ac access to that particular programs at a very subsidized rates. And many other competition, uh, certification of competence from the Institute of Engineers of India, IEI, uh, they are also get a lot of uh, disciplines which are offered at a very discounted and subsidized rates as I will talk about. So there is a varied set of landscape of activities which we normally do year on year. I've not enlisted uh, particularly any specific example because across India, across the eight different regions, we have voluminous number of events which gets happened year on year. So the broadly looking into the categories, if I want to say that the first one, we try to talk about the conferences. It could be the conferences which is driven under the CSA umbrella by the student chapters as part of the national conventions or as part of the international conferences by the colleges, they're all great promoted. 
Second thing is related to the workshops and trainings, especially speaking about faculty development programs or the professional development programs, and also drive some of the certification areas. Uh, we normally leverage a lot of educational experts to help us in uh, this conduction of these programs. The third area is about the research projects. Basically, you always get into a challenge when you want to drive the research areas. The first thing is how well, uh, you know, what kind of projects uh, you can get it, how do you get the funds related to the projects, and how do you really drive yourself in driving the research. So what does a research con constitute and uh, the methods the, the paper writing skills and the researching skills, everything will be taught as part of that particular research workshops. The other categories in the CSA activities, what you try to say is about uh, the summits and uh, which we normally organize, where the leadership uh, bracket like uh, CXO people will come together to share their knowledge and understanding about their investments, about their solutions, about their offerings, about the opportunities for the students and uh, to, you, you can use that particular opportunity to network and get access to the leaders. The other areas where we try to contribute is our uh, IT exhibitions or the fairs where we try to preach upon the some of the important activities of CSA or initiatives which is really helping and bridging the gap between the society uh, problems to the IT needs. And uh, more over and above, we also see that the specific focused programs we normally conduct for the students and also for the corporate professionals and uh, where we try to get into the deep dive workshops and trainings, which can really give them the full length understanding, especially especially if you're trying to talk about the students. Uh, some programs we, we normally conduct on the full stack developer skills. Uh, we try to conduct some programs on the emerging technology workshops like blockchain and AI. Uh, could be related to the quantum as well. And uh, this this particular depth related activities are generally done and driven by the SIGs, uh, where they try to utilize uh, uh, many, many experts with the depth oriented knowledge to come and speak to you guys. So one of two, co two commonly and vibrantly used groups are the e-governance group and free open source software group, or what we call where they normally conduct a lot of this knowledge sharing sessions on a regular basis. And uh, further to that, you also see the in kind of impact the CSA activities have created is uh, among us. You see uh, many such uh, IT professional students benefit the, from this particular uh, events, programs, initiatives, workshops, which is really driving them to engage with the leaders and uh, take the advantage of uh, some of the conferences and the platforms which can really enable their uh, soft skills as well. So it's important that you should, uh, the focus is uh, we wanted to develop the leaders of tomorrow and uh, with the high quality technical educations and promoting the collaborations across can really help in upskilling, reskilling and cross-skilling. Uh, so today, if you want to be a good professional, you need to have an understanding out how do you unlearn, learn and relearn. So that the cycle is always there, learn, unlearn, relearn, so that you have an opportunity to learn the new technologies without having any kind of a bias of the older technologies on you. And uh, so this uh, bringing the bringing the convention, bringing the different community of professionals together to bridge the gap and drive towards a common solution is the way CSI creates an impact with their events. Now, as I mentioned, there are special interest groups which have been very, very uh, firmly driving certain functions. And uh, in 2006, there was an amendment which has been done that we need to have a depth of technology focus with higher discipline, the specialized discipline that will really drive uh, in-depth understanding about the research functions in that area so that we can promote that particular discipline to be adapted and specialized in that area. So not only that uh, depth is important, but it's important that uh, no particular technology can hold good on its own. You need to collaborate with other technologies. You need to uh, really bundle it with other technologies to make it happen. So if you want AI to stand on its own, it will not work. You need to have AI combined with analytics or you need to have an AI combined with mobile computing or cloud computing. Uh, you need to have an AI with the prom uh, utilization of the big data analytics and text mining techniques. All these things plays an important role. 
So there are around 32 special interest groups which has been already been formed and uh, driving the functions. Some of the SIGs which I wanted to enlist here for your knowledge, like e-governance, artificial intelligence, free open source software, the software engineering area. There, there is a huge amount of focus and discipline on how software engineering uh, elements are looking at. Now, software engineering, I believe some of you might be using Prisman as part of your learning. Uh, where we try to help them understand about the entire development life cycle in the form of waterfall and agile. Today, primarily when I speak, it's all about agile, scaled agile frameworks which are getting utilized in the industry. You need to have a deeper understanding of that, how you plan, how you track, how you monitor, how you offer the feedback. How do you try to create the continuous integration and continuous development pipeline so that your systems are much, much, much easier and better? And similarly, what we try to see today, um, uh, some of the popular technologies like uh, uh, Pulumi, uh, one of the technology which I normally uh, Terraform Pulumi, they try to utilize uh, uh, the knowledge of how well you will be able to uh, source your project right from the build to the deployment and offer the feedback. So basically, when you're trying to look into the overall journey of your source code to the deployment, once you check in the code, you need to integrate, validate. Uh, once the validation is completed, you need to really deploy, monitor, and offer the feedback. It's a loop. It's a continuous iteration loop. The software engineering principles combined with the DevOps talks about that. The data engineering speaks about your data virtualization. We speak about the data, uh, enterprise data lake, data analytics, and also how well you'll be able to monetize your data using data as a service. So one of the statement is you might be commonly hearing is 21st century oil is data. So the first, the, any any company which has rich in data will be able to create a bigger bigger re revenue margins as the uh, revenue as they create. Now you talk about Facebook, Google, all these things have created a platforms and attracted the data generation. And now the data has been generated. Now they have the opportunity to monetize the data by really applying the data science skills into it and as the digital technologies are evolving you need to know that um, the human computing and information security especially the cyber security area is becoming even more prominent and uh, you, you might have recently heard a few months ago where there was a supply chain attack happened in the white house so the virus has not been built, able to penetrate into directly into the white house related systems but it has injected into the third party system and the third party system was uh, carrying that virus into the system and uh, it was not able to discover. So that you can see how supply chain attacks are happening and how these particular attacks can be really um, proactively monitored, mitigated ahead of time. That information security, cybersecurity, special interest groups will be able to share that knowledge. The ethical hacking and other things also fall under that. Similarly, the social networking, social science research, high performance clusters and the grid computing, some of the key areas where how well your computing power is able to scale high. We have seen CPUs, we have seen graphical processing units, Google trying to promote a lot of tensor processing units, and today uh, the world is also eagerly waiting for the quantum processing units to come out. In fact, if you try to go and see the videos of quantum machines, it's almost the similar size of uh, for age old uh, semi, during the uh, time of 75 and 80, how the machines were looking like a specific building, right? Of the same size, uh, these quantum machines are made of. But it has got a higher computing capabilities, which can really, really uh, drive the entire computing faster and faster. So just for the sake of a knowledge, I try to touch upon quantum where you try to see, you normally store in the digital world zeros and ones, bits, right? In the quantum world, you try to store in, store the state as part of the qubits. Qubits can carry both the states, zero and one together. So in case if you are trying to uh, do any particular activity in the digital world, uh, you do it very, very sequentially. But in the quantum world, you do it parallelly all at a time so that your entire cycle time can get reduced to, to a greater level. So similarly, some of these uh, SIGs have been extended to the uh, business value information technologies, green IT, bioinformatics, cyber forensics. The list is huge, big data, IoT, innovation and entrepreneurship and information and communication technology. That's what we call about ICT. Uh, this has got a huge amount of traction, how you try to promote. Nevertheless, I want to also touch upon the e-agriculture today. Uh, 
combining the big data, IoT and uh, AI and uh, cloud computing, a lot of e-agriculture related solutions can be addressed and solved. You may talk about the soil testing. You try to talk about how the what kind of crops will be growing under what soil. So today there are many many such kind of a mobile solutions available which can do this for you. And in fact, TCS I'm trying to talk uh, when I'm trying to speak from CTC standpoint. TCS has got a solution called Mkrishi, which can advise the customers on the you know, what kind of crops can grow in that particular soil area. They can analyze the moisture. They can analyze the soil. They can analyze the entire uh, uh, the what water level and everything and be able to com communicate to the uh, farmer how what kind of uh, farming proactive needs need to be taken care so that uh, his farm will be yielded rightly so such initiatives uh, and SIGs are really getting promoted and uh, just want to touch upon few of the major activities with the SIGs are currently doing uh, from the e-government angle, I would say that, uh, in fact, Telangana is not listed here. That also can be included. Uh, we are trying to associate with the government authorities and try such kind of a programs. In fact, and recently last year, uh, CSA Hyderabad chapter was instrumental in conducting a mock test for the MZ for the students. And we have successfully did that. Uh, and second area is about the human computing. You see a lot of exchange programs, collaboration meetings, research and training programs we normally conduct. Any student who are actively volunteering in this area or who really wanted to go to abroad for your higher studies, um, there is a, also a kind of a, recommend, a letter of recommendation is offered by the Computer Society of India because he has done good amount of volunteering. And so, which will eventually help them in their exchange programs as they move forward. And social networking is also another area where we try to provide the platform for you to network and socialize your uh, views with the other leaders of the IT. And IT SSR, what we try to call is about uh, bringing the um, the social empowered networks and uh, trying to do with the conferences and the publications and providing them the guidance. Uh, so as I mentioned that and, and, and entrepreneurship, uh, so, uh, in the last slide, I told about innovation and entrepreneurship in the ICT. That particular thing has got a major role to play uh, in uh, driving the NREGA project, which is a national rural employment guarantee uh, project, which uh, uh, government of India is trying to give and say that the minimum wages and minimum employment guarantee they provide around 200 working days in any year to ensure this uh, lives are able to survive for that particular year overall. So such initiatives, we have constantly doing it. And uh, one of the eGov society has been prominently started within Hyderabad, very proudly able to communicate that to you. And, uh, and they, uh, this particular SIG is responsible for providing the e-governance awards and uh, also do regular uh, knowledge sharing sessions and uh, drive the functions here. And uh, there is also a lot of um, web portal available giving you a lot of initiatives and directions associated to the Computer Society of India SIG on eGov, uh, where regularly they connect and help. So apart from that, uh, you can see a list of research publications which are enlisted here. I've listed some of the prominent ones, a little dated, but it's still worth looking at it, which is coming in from some of the uh, prominent leaders like RK Bagga and uh, giving you a view how well they have uh, contributed to that. Not only them, but today in 2019, 2020, also you could see significant research publications have been done uh, in the area of e-governance, free open source software. In fact, CSI also works closely with Swecha. Swecha, uh, is, a, uh, Swecha is a kind of a open source body. Uh, basically, they try to fight for the free open source software and try to promote that to a great level. You can see how uh, special interest group related to the free open source software was able to uh, drive the promotion of the different technology needs and adoptions. So in case if you are a student who are really wanted to work on some of the open source software, this is a SIG which can give you the lot of guidance on how to use the software, uh, what kind of software plays a role. Remember, nothing comes for you freely. There is an enterprise grade software. They say develop a great free software which is available. So you need to see the some of the terms and conditions and the contracts under which you try to work and abide by. And uh, there are a lot of uh, 
contributions which you make for the free open source software is acknowledged and uh, appreciated by the corporate companies today when you go for an interview you say that i have contributed to the some of the free open source software in fixing the bugs or adding new features you have a upper hand about the others uh, when you compared uh, with others because the very few people normally contribute and uh, you can really fork the code from the git and uh, get a repository and start working in some of the open source software and extend the knowledge you can also fix the bugs you can also add the new features so so there is a lot of uh, knowledge dissemination happens within the sig as we try to drive our functions some of the other key activities of the other sigs includes like a wireless networking the reason i'm trying to promote and help you understand about this sig is, is many of you are coming from the varied background and uh, some might be interested in iot some might be interested in artificial intelligence some might be interested in the cloud computing some might be interested in wireless networking or the green it so uh, or the high performance computing or grid computing or the quantum computing areas in looking at your interest you should associate yourself with these societies uh, and start understanding what is happening in this space so it's a good way to learn it's a good way to understand uh, the happening around this particular area as you try to touch upon as i mentioned uh, you can say uh, I, I, as i'm speaking uh, uh, you can also see that there is a huge amount of uh, affiliations which is really promoting the cross knowledge collaboration cross knowledge exchange in fact as i mentioned uh, in the introduction of mine I just served as a secretary, and now currently I'm the treasurer of the IEEE Hyderabad section, and also the vice chair for the Computer Society of India. I have a dual role in IEEE and uh, CSI, and I also uh, contribute to the some of the initiatives of the Institute of Engineers of India (IEI). So, so when I'm trying to work with these three, it's very very seamless for me because they're all connected together, and uh, whatever I do in IEEE, I can invite CSI members. Uh, whatever i do in csi can invite iwe members so there is absolutely no restriction that if you are a csi you should not attend iwe or vice versa so it's important uh, this you understand the affiliations and start leveraging that uh, your your membership and take advantage of the benefit what this other affiliations are running the programs so that you have a combination of knowledge together so as i mentioned when you try to volunteer when you try to consistently volunteer and serve the nation uh serve the students and also the it professionals there is a sense of recognition which is required and that is done through the form of csa awards where we normally give out uh, the student branch awards chapter patrons honorary fellowships uh young it professionals e governance awards whoever is contributing in that area some of the excellence awards across the different industries and the lifetime achievement award this all are the sense of accomplishments what individuals have done in their work in their job function in their life looking into that conditions and merit we normally give out so one of the fellow within the hyderabad who is available today is uh, 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 dr dd sharma who uh, is also incidentally the editor for the csi communications uh, journal now coming to the students important that um, uh, we normally give out lot of lectures and also help them on the guidance on the contests and the interviews Uh, we also try to help them on the some of the student con conventions and some of the projects on the new upcoming emerging technologies. There are paper contests, debates. Some of the CSI members are also part of the board of studies of the engineering autonomous colleges. We try they normally try to recommend uh, keeping the outside in view about the syllabus and revision changes, so that will eventually help in uh, managing your. Uh, syllabus according to the needs of what IIT is really looking at. Otherwise, if you don't try to understand what IIT needs are, there will be a significant gap what you learn and what you need to do after you graduate. And as I keep speaking about, uh, it's important that you also have a view of uh, the some of the editorials which plays an important role. The CSI communication is one of the important uh, area where we normally try to use. uh uh the right articles events and we try to also speak about some of the activities happening across and every month it comes with a theme and uh, invites new articles new fresh thoughts uh, which can be published and there is also quarterly technical journals which gets published newsletters of the different chapters they get published 
some of the competitions and the e-newsletter of the entire CSA also gets published. The chapter newsletter can cover your own activities. As a student branch, I want, especially the, uh, the body, which is trying to operate and run your functions, you need to define your own charter. You need to define your entire plan of one year, what kind of programs you need to run, what kind of knowledge sharing you need to do, what kind of uh, experts you need to invite to do the programs for you. You need to think about what kind of professional development programs we need to do, what kind of contests like hackathons and uh, debates, uh, understanding about the technology trends, some of the workshops with a deeper understanding about the technology and hands on. So you plan what is relevant, what is important for you, and try to come back to CSA at about chapter and keep asking for the help and support of SMEs, which we can eventually help you in getting those things. And um, so not only that, uh, basically, uh, that one side is professional development programs, second side is uh, social awareness programs. In fact, uh, uh, there are a couple of villages near the Gutke where we visited uh, and uh, helped them on uh, the usage of the mobile in delivering the, the or making the payments. So especially speaking, uh, we have uh, worked with some of the bodies uh, and uh, collaborated with them, visited two, two or three villages and helped all the villages to understand how they can use their smartphones to make their utility payments. Just a mere thought which really helped them to significantly save going down and enable them to start trusting the technology with good instincts. And today, you know that uh, the entire uh, entire group in that particular region, uh, they're able to make their water payments, electricity payments, property tax, trade tax, all these things, utility payments online. And uh, there are there are particular instances where we have provided a lot of donations to the by purchasing the computers and deploying it in the schools, especially <coughs> computers we have given for the blind for the enabled people. <coughs> and uh, today, as we think, um, we also try to drive our focus towards the CSA schools. <coughs> as of now, we are only focusing on the colleges, but we also wanted to see how well we can drive the foundation to enrich the knowledge of the IT to the students as well. Some of the uh, major events which I've enlisted, this is a little dated, but bear with me. But uh, the 2012 was where one of the pride moment year where we have done significant conventions across India and also the seminars. Not, not to say less, but 2019 also a lot of virtual programs and events were conducted. And because of the pandemic, we were not able to physically connect, but we, there was a lot of virtual programs which were promoted in this area. So it could be a national seminars, conferences, international conferences. Uh, they were all part of our overall interest and thrust of executing the things. Some of the key thrust areas where we see this computer society of India keep on focusing and driving the thing is, uh, one is research, second is about the publications and the kind of outreach we want to create to the students and professional communities. The third important thrust area is the special interest groups, where we see there is a huge amount of technical depth can be created. And uh, fourth area is how we can uh, help in uh, skill upgradations cross-skilling and uh, reskilling and uh, upskilling areas. Some, some of the program awareness associated with the international conferences, building some of the cybersecurity awareness so that uh, these digital vulnerabilities can be captured and uh, analyzed and uh, protected your, protect your systems against those things. And also promote the heavy usage of the free open source software and, the, uh, and uh, embrace diversity and inclusion in your entire function so that you have a good combinations uh, exist and drive the functions accordingly. Now, some of the regional region chapters, which I mentioned here, eight regions which I stated, uh, giving an enlistment of the different chapters and, and reach of the region. In fact, uh, uh, when you look at uh, Hyderabad, comes under the region five. So this is a view of the regions and the chapters under which we are trying to operate. The contact details are mentioned here. The head office currently operates from Mumbai. And there is an education director. Any, any, any membership related queries and other things, you normally write to the education directorate. So they, they are responsible for managing your membership, managing your reimbursements, managing your credits, whatever it is. It comes from the ED 
which is located in Chennai. So that in a nutshell, which I thought of covering as part of the Computer Society of India, uh, this has got a huge amount of uh, uh, passion to deliver technology, passion to promote uh, knowledge and uh, and passion to drive the collaboration and passion to enable the networking through different platforms across the globe, especially within India. With that note, I conclude my talk and I'll be open to take up any particular questions if you have any. Thank you. Any questions? You can put in the chat window if there is anything, I will be able to take it up. Any questions? Okay, let me open the chat window. Please mention your questions if there is any. Sri Vash Vaisista, over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing such valuable information and your precious time with us today, sir. And I'm sure most of us present here today have learned quite a bit and have understood the importance of the role that we play in the advancement of the country and as well as what it means to give back to... Your society. voice is a bit low, Sri Vash. Uh, am I audible now, sir? Uh, just a second. Hello. Audible now, sir. Hello. 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 Is my voice audible for you? Clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go on. I believe it. I'm not sure for others, but for me, it was a little low. Okay. Uh, and now it's more important and more evident uh, than ever because of these tough times. And if not for that, I'm pretty sure that we'd love your presence and ask all the big and small doubts that we had. And thank you for making us more aware of the ways that we can understand the industry better and prepare accordingly. I want to take this chance to thank our coordinator, Sita Kameshwari ma'am, and our faculty, Gayatri ma'am and Divya ma'am, for giving us this opportunity and facilitating it. And Sandeep, sir, for the technical support. I'd like to thank our management and faculty for their unending support. Last but not least, I'd like to thank all the students present here today. Thank you, everyone. And the registrations for this will be open till 31st of this month. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A link to the feedback form has been given in chat window. Please uh, fill that before you leave the meeting. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, daily one. Sri Vash, uh, not able to hear you clearly. Are there any clear? specific questions for me? 
I'm I'm not getting any questions, so. If anyone has any uh, questions, they can please post in the chat window. Yeah, that would be great. So one last message which I want to give out is uh, most importantly, when you start your career, it's important that you should associate with any one particular international body. It could be national or international body because that will give you a significant mileage in uh, enriching your knowledge and also driving your networking skills to lead me in a career in the right way. So use uh, Computer Society of India as one of your launch pads to step up uh, your career path. Thank you. Okay, Sri Gosh, then I'm, I'm signing off now. Thank you. Thank you, Sita Kamishri, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity to share about CSI. Thank you.